Uh, it's another episode of BFE Sport and uh, my name is Farouk Chivirige and um, today we have uh, someone who is going to educate us about freestyle football in Uganda. Uh, first of all, um, first introduce yourself to the viewers of BFE Sport. Well, uh, thank you very much, BFE Sports. Uh, I'm so grateful to BFE Entertainment, to Baboon Forest Entertainment that I am, was invited here and I'm here to discuss uh, freestyle football. My name is Lugemwa Patrick. I'm a sport administrator and I'm here in my capacity as a sport administrator. I'm a graduate of sport administration from IOC, International Olympics Committee. Well, um, I am a country leader of freestyle football in Uganda. Uh, I was appointed by World Freestyle Football Association, which has headquarters in Ontario, Canada. Freestyle football is a sport. It is an individual sport. Uh, so I'm happy to be here, and I'm happy that we are going to educate, to teach, and create awareness for the sport of freestyle. Okay. Um, let's talk about the background of uh, freestyle football. Let's talk about that. Well, um, freestyle football is believed to have been in existence for over 2,000 years ago. Wow. So this type of football was mostly practiced by South Koreans, South Asians, Ming Sang and Wu. Wu and Ming Sang. They were brothers. They used to practice this type of football. It is a type of football of juggling. You can, you can call it juggling. Uh, playing with a ball on your body without it falling down. You can use any part of your body. Head, shoulders. You and can use your legs. Can you use your hands as well? Uh, it depends. You can roll the ball on your hands. You can roll the ball from here to here. It's also a trick. It's a skill. So this type of football was brought on, it, it came on growing slowly. The great Diego Maradona, Armando, one of the greatest footballers who has ever lived. Mm. Then he used to practice, he brought that form of football close to association football. I'm going to explain to you what association football is and what an individual sport called freestyle football is. So Diego Maradona used to practice freestyle football. It was very entertaining to the people, to the crowd. There are four forms of football. Mm. One is, a, is, the, is uh, 11 aside, aside. 11 aside is association football. It is under FUFA mm. and under CAF, Confederation of African Football, and under FIFA. Um, association football has also three types. Mm. I said we have four types. Yeah. So um, association football, which is 11 aside, one. There's futsal, which is five aside, two. And beach soccer. Beach soccer is also a form of football, three. And then freestyle is the fourth form of football. It is not mostly known locally, mm. but it is known globally. It is, freestyle football is under World Freestyle Football Association, while the other three forms are under FUFA, CAF, and FIFA. So, um, this form of football, Maradona practiced it. Mm. We came to Ronaldinho. It is believed to be the foundation of football because when you get a ball... And you, Pele. And yeah, Pele, Pele right? yeah. Pele had very great skills of freestyle. Mm. So, when you get a ball, you, only, you first play a ball, a ball yourself before you call anybody else. So, it is believed to be the father of football. It is a very powerful form of football which is greatly practiced by Chinese, Japanese. Uh, there is World Freestyle Football Association has a website. You can see very many countries. There are very many freestylers. Mm. So here in Uganda, we started in 2020. This idea yes, was brought, Just recent. Yeah, just recent. It is a new sport. So this idea was brought to me by a gentleman called uh, Solomon Caesar. He's called Caesar. Caesar Sentongo, Solomon Sentongo. Mm. He's an artist. He's a musician. But he brought me the idea. Since I was a sport administrator, I got it on, and we formed a board of people. We had uh, 
founding members we had Maureen or Rodrigo, mm. the lady from West Nile, uh, Ivan. What does she do like on the on the board? On the board, she's mm. in charge of West Nile region. Okay. Uh, we have uh, Ivan Bukenya, who was a former Uganda Cranes footballer. Mm. He gained interest because he has academies. And we have uh, Mogeni Fred, who is a, an accountant mm. with Nick and, uh, and Young, but also a founding member. So we created a board and we started a show to create awareness, a freestyle show to create awareness of the game. So we are happy to Baboon Forest Entertainment that it is an avenue. It is a company that we, partner, we, we have partnered with to promote the sport, to create awareness. Freestyle football works hand in hand with music. It is a sportainment mm. type of sport. It is an individual sport, while the other forms of football are, associ- are team sports. So this is an individual sport. Individual sport. It is practiced by one person and it is for the community. Or anyone can be a freestyler. As long as you get the ball and you only need the ball. So I was talking about how it links with entertainment. Yeah. Hip hop is fused with free- freestyle. The juggling can be from the music. The, tr- the streaks can relate to the music, mm. which is very interesting. It can create a crowd that you've never seen. Nambole can be full. If we say that Baboon Forest is having an event and we're having freestyle fusion as a segment, mm. whenever there is music, it's, it's, um, Red Bull is fond of sponsoring this sport. It's a very good partner with World Freestyle Football Association because Red Bull has sponsors a lot of sports. That's right. Mm. Um, let's talk about uh, where, where are the headquarters of uh, freestyle uh, football in Uganda? Uh, in Uganda, freestyle is a new sport. Mm. Its headquarters are being established in Entebbe. And its headquarters on, on the global level are in Ontario, Canada. Okay. And in Canada, this sport was founded by two individuals who registered it as a sport. And it has 116 federations all over the world, countries, 116 countries. It was registered by Dan Wood, who is the co-founder, and then Elias Steve. They run the game on the global level. And they are, they are partnered with very many uh, big brands mm. and looking forward for the game becoming an Olympic sport in 2028, fully an Olympic sport. So that is a very big partnership with IOC, which we all look up to. Because here in Uganda, we shall be able to partner with UOC, which is Uganda Olympics Committee. Mm. Yes, to grow the game, to participate in the Olympics. We have, we have gotten five freestylers, apparently. Five. We have Kamoga Nuldin, who is, who is one of the best freestylers. He can really <laughs> juggle the ball with tricks. Do you have some, some ladies? We have one lady. She's called Bridget Nakalanzi. Oh. Uh, there's a lot of content. They're practicing and they are looking forward for, the, uh, for, for, for any competitions on the national and uh, global level, African level and then world level because they are world competitions. And then there is ba- Badi, Badru. Badru is also a freestyler. And there's Isaiah Misamu. He's also one of the freestylers. Okay, um, let's talk about the governance. Like, uh, how do you run the, this sport? So, um, any Olympic sport or any sport to fit in the Olympics, to be one of the Olympic sports, it must have what they call a structure. Mm. A structure is a composition, it has a, comp- a structure is composed of the directors or the, the president. Yeah. Actually, no, the General Assembly, that is the General Assembly that must be on top. The General Assembly. The General Assembly is led by the President, chaired by the President. But a sport must be run professionally through having a a proper structure. Even if in the beginning it may not be so functional, Mm. but it has to be there. You have to have the Chairman, the CEO, the uh, Executive Committee members, which, which is the board, 
and then you can have the administration down the administrative structure mm. you can have a person managing finance a person managing uh, human resource you must have uh, because you must have you must do proper bookkeeping you understand you must have audit books of account so you need a structure professionals running a sport so sports normally because it is a non-profit organization mm. it starts uh, by using volunteers you can use volunteers to run a sport students are uh, uh, graduates from campus from Makere University or from other universities who have studied sports science to mm. come and help because as they run the sport they learn so a sport cr uh, creates uh, resources from a lot of partnerships from a, from, from a couple of avenues mm. one is partnerships and sponsorships two is government after we, we are going to talk about registration okay yeah but if you partner with government government funds sports it funds football so uh, partnerships we have partnering with bfe baboon forest entertainment mm. to make sure we promote the sport so this partnership can we, we can have uh, things in kind we can have events we can do get collection we can promote other brands like banks um, athlete athletics is one of the individual sports athletics you will have one zikuru and then you will have mtn partner with him mm. through the association of course freestyle football association freestyle football federation uganda and then that's how we grow the sport through creating awareness that's how other young talented individuals in uganda would see that this is a sport i can practice and they pick interest from there yeah they pick interest they join the sport it can be a way of life because the essence of establishing this sport is to change this community to give young people a way to live to for them to live healthy and successful in life wow um let's talk about um uh, is this sport uh, fully registered or is it uh, fully registered well um Running a sport requires resources, which resources in the beginning are non-existent. So we have to outsource. Outsourcing means I, the one of the founding members, or the founding members would get some money and register a sport through uh, the right government procedures, through with a national council of sports. So this process is done by a lawyer, mm. and we have undergone this process but national council of sports will award a certificate after the process is complete mm. so uh, uh mr patrick ogwell who is the uh general secretary of national council of sports he's aware we have wrote we've written letters we've had discussions and we our lawyer is going through the right procedures till the final registration but registration the registration is the, is the process the lot of requirements you have to meet you understand you have to have activities you don't just register you're registering what a sport where is it practiced who practices it it is so some of the prerequisites some of the requirements are where are the activities we have freestylers we have um if, if, if we have uh, uh, social media platforms mm. the content is already there the content is we are creating content through shows creating awareness and then including other people in the sport there registration is done and dusted done and dusted uh well let, 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 let's talk about uh, the competitions um like how do you organize these competitions and um how do people compete less of that well um apparently freestyle football has forms so uganda has regions Mm. West Nile East Eastern Central Northern So if we have freestylers coming from the northern part of Uganda and are represented to come to Kampala they 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 see through we can do online competitions mm. if they can send videos to us 
and then we sieve, and then we have a competition in the central. Um, we've been uh, we've been through through the process of looking, searching for talent, searching for people freestylers. We went to Natete, and we realized very many people can actually freestyle, but they can't play the other form of football. Mm. They can't be in the eleven aside. They can't play the five aside. They can't be in beach soccer, but they can freestyle, and it's entertaining. You know, people go through a lot of things. Mm. It is sometimes it is hard to make them laugh. But freestyle is a sport that when I got a ball right now and stood up, you would start laughing. If I did a move, even if I failed, you'd, you'd laugh still. So it is a game that gives hope to the society, mm. which is a very powerful, uh, actually, uh, it's a very powerful quality and attribute, whatever you can call it, to have, to create harmony and peace in the society. Mm. Uh, let's talk about um, capacity building. Yeah, let's talk about that. Well, um, since it's a sport and it must be run professionally, we must build capacity. How? Through having courses, different courses, teaching those who are interested to become judges, to become uh, freestylers. Courses are given to us by World Freestyle Football Association. Just a moment. Um, can I be like, is it a talent or it is taught? Like, how, how, to, like, how do I start freestyle football? Mm. Is it a talent mm. or you can actually teach me how to do freestyle football? Um, everything a human, an individual has inside them is, can be nurtured and given the right direction, which, which, in future can become professionalized you can you can be a professional athlete you can be a professional freestyler so if we show you that freestyle is like this or through a video you have watched from youtube and you try it out we can nurture you to become a professional athlete you understand mm. Mm. so it it is a talent that can be nurtured there are footballers that are very good, but, uh, but, but uh, there are footballers that are too good, but then not too talented. They are good, but not talented. Hey. So okay. either way, it works. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's talk about uh, brand visibility. Mm. How um, have you like, been open for some brands like, to come and join, to come on board? Like, so that you can get some, some funds from these brands? Well, um, the first step to make a brand visible is creating awareness. We have partnered with Baboon Forest Entertainment and this is a very good partnership because it has made us visible to the public which will attract other brands, thus sponsorship. So we have had a, a TV show on FUFA TV. Mm. FUFA TV is a sports television. Any footballer would watch and see skills and see how freestyle is practiced. So that is the visibility we are talking about. Social media. We make sure that if WFF has a competition, we also advertise it on our social media. Mm. We have um, a gentleman called Mr. Odeke who uh, is partnering with us to make sure he uh, runs our social media and um, that part of brand visibility. So Mr. Odeke is on board to help us run the game. That is what we are doing as far as uh, brand visibility is concerned. Trying to wedge away in that direction. Okay. Mm. Um, maybe uh, as we are winding up, um, is there any way the government, like you would like the government to help in this particular game? Well, um, the way sp sp a sport is developed 
from any okay like um okay the way the sport is doped is you when you register with national council and mm. done with registration eventually there are requirements that you you'll have to um fulfill if you have activities if you have freestylers that are on the global level that are good to the level of participating in other competitions and you need to uh participate in other competitions the government will come in how government sponsors football mm. government gives football almost 17 billion a year 17 billion shillings football is one of the most funded sports another sports boxing a little some kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. you get but freestyle is a form of football yeah you understand so government will eventually come on board government will eventually help the sport when when the time comes right now we are growing because this is a sport that can be practiced by anyone, anywhere. There are very many ghetto kids who are lying in ghettos and doing a lot of nothing, but they have talent on football. So if we have a, a kid, freestyle is practiced in only three, like one minute. That is now a professional athlete. One minute without dropping the ball. Mm. And for women, 40 seconds. I actually saw a video, a video clip of a president mm. juggling that ball. Simple. For uh, I think it was it was close to one and a half minutes. Like, yeah, close that, to two minutes. That is freestyle football. Wow. Mm. Okay. Maybe your last remarks. Well, um, I would like to thank Baboon Forest Entertainment for uh, inviting me to this show. This is a very great opportunity, and I believe we shall work together for a very long time. Because this is music, this is entertainment. Remember the word spotainment. Mm. I would like to thank my colleagues, Fred Mogeni, who has helped me to make sure we run the Lego side of uh, issues concerning the sport. Mm. And uh, I would like to thank uh, Mr. Dan Wood, who is the co-founder of Freestyle Football in the world. Uh, and also Mr. Steve Elias. Uh, Peje. Uh, is also Peko. Thank you very much for the work you're doing for the game. Uh, and I'm telling you, Uganda is prepared. Whenever we open up that website, we see our logo uh, there. We feel uh, so uh, grateful, and we know we've participated. We're looking forward to having an organized uh, kind of organization or sport that will participate in the Olympics. More strategically, you know, you understand. More strategically, not just because Uganda has talent. We all know that. I do, I do not have to explain. Uganda has the best talent in the world. That's true. We can. We have guys who can juggle the ball for eight hours, like like Mr. Wu and Sang, who who founded this game. Here we have them. Badru, Badru can juggle the the ball without dropping it. He will do so much. He will have skills. And me, I've watched freestylers who, who, have, who have practiced freestyle on the world level. They are good, but these guys we have are bad. <laughs> you understand? So thank you very much, uh, BFE. Thank you very much, Mr. Genial Zamba. Thank you very much.